Dante, no. have you um, recovered from the, the, the misery of the, oh, the misery of the World Cup? I, I actually, I, to answer all those people, there has been no other question asked me. Everywhere I go, I buy a sandwich. Did, you, uh, go did you go to Uruguay? All that kind of, I didn't go to Uruguay, but the experience was just as shattering. Yeah, but um, uh, I, all I kept on thinking as as Australia was losing three 0 was. I, I am hereby sick of barracking for Italy in the World Cup. Yeah. I just, you just you want, want to get, let it happen, yeah. you know. It's well, just, what do you mean when you say that? Well, you mean you, you want some new... Yeah, you know, I think that, you know, obviously they, they were a good enough... And there's all this stuff like, oh, they were beaten by a better team. We'll have Frank Farina on after to talk about it. But I, I don't think that they were a better team. It's just that they knew what to do to qualify. But, uh, there, there was a, uh, there's a culture in... Should in, we be... Should we be competing against the other Oceania teams? Is there something wrong that well, we, we have did, to but go we, play really, really good teams? We just, keep we just keep beating them thirty-five nil. So we, uh, it's probably not a bad thing to have to have to go against other teams, but there just needs. H to be haven't a bit we of jumped off the, the soccer bandwagon? I mean, you know, for yeah. last Tuesday it was uh, it was oh, the no. greatest. It's a world game. We love it. <laughs> and and come Monday it was like yeah, cricket. What's Every, on every, every <laughs> uh, uh, did go to the game. Oh. <laughs> you were in Uruguay. You're in Uruguay. Well, well, well mm -hmm. by coincidence, the camera actually swung around and got a shot of me That's in the crowd. And you can actually, well, you can actually, you I'd can hear, you it. can actually hear me in the crowd as well. Oh. I don't know whether you. Just listen, just listen to this. Go the money out there. Uh, uh, that, that was really pathetic. Wasn't it? That was really pathetic. No, no, I really appreciate anyone that goes to effort. Yeah, yeah well, you know. can I show you a piece of footage that um, that uh, I, they had a slow motion in Frank Farina's like a, a very emotional moment. Yeah. And it, security was a big issue, wasn't it? Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. True. And and the, the, watch the riot policeman in the background of this of this scene here. Oh. Just what happened if Harry Kuehl's cross had been met at the other end. Oh, he's happy. Got you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not yeah, if, you, if you actually look carefully, his German Shepherd is wagging his tail. <laughs> There's, uh, but it was, it was tragic. In my household, there was Taliban rule. There was no music, no laughter. Oh, okay. Kids weren't allowed to fly kites. It was. Um, <laughs> it was. Uh, you, know what, you know what's bad about is it was Monday morning. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's true. You, you got. It, Monday, it got even worse. Which is yeah. bad anyway. Um, you, I, you, I, I suspect that um, that. Uh, anthems may have something to do with it. This, as in, in South America, they do a good anthem. Uh, you, sorry, I, we were talking about, did you get the Uruguay national anthem? I've, I've actually got it because I, I, I like a South American national anthem. What do you think it is about the national anthem that's so well, important? Just have a, we'll have a listen to the Uruguay okay. national anthem. It's got a bit of audience, audience participation at the end as well, oh. so have a, have a listen. I, I believe that's Spanish for yes we can yeah. but, but but there's something really militaristic mm. don't you think like yeah. we, we've got a, an anthem that's kind of like sounds good at school but in South America there's there's something really it sounds like, like it's on, on an LP record it's a bit <laughs> scratchy and a bit you know yeah, yeah but mm. a month of a day it's, it's not exactly they're not going to you know drag out you know Jimmy Barnes's kid or anything no. like that to, to it is, it's music for generals isn't it yeah it exactly is. It is. Yeah. you're feeling doing something violent and music to win by exactly I think it is it's got it's it's got that you know I go tell you what though I've got hooked. I never thought this would happen. I've got hooked on singing the national anthem. Who's that? Would be a Uruguayan? No. Yes, we can. <laughs> really? No, yeah. Not sort of just in the shower or. Um, um, I at, sang at it at the Melbourne Cup. Yeah. And a really rousing. I but love Kate, it. You were pissed at the Melbourne Cup. I think quite a bit. Oh no! no you mean you mean that you're feeling very proud when you but sing I it, love it, and you and really you know, take a moment. Yes, yeah, but we and I love singing it. And I love to sing it lustily. <laughs> no, I agree. If you're in a, nothing better, yeah. do you get the shivers up the spine when yes, you? Yeah, I, I do. do. Right. Yeah. But I've never yeah. had that feeling right. before. It's after only a the very break, recent thing. After the break, would you like to hear Kate sing oh, the national anthem? Yeah. 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 Next on the panel, are you going to do it? A few days ago, our first guest was over there in Uruguay, desperately trying to help the Australian team qualify for the World Cup. Sadly, it was not to be. But he's back here now, keen to give it another shot in 2006. Six. Please welcome Australian coach, Mr. Frank Perina. Um, 
I've, I've heard everything said that we should not be part of Oceania, we should be part of Asia, we should be based in Europe, we should be... Is, if you could wave a wand, what was the one, one thing that you changed if, if you have another campaign? Well, if, if, if I could wave a wand, I'd, I'd say that, you know, if we could have automatic qualification from Oceania, that'd be ideal, but I, I don't think that's going to happen, to be fair. Uh, and the second option would be, you know, to play the, the third or fourth place Asians uh, every four years, but that's another one we're not, not really certain of. So because before Monday, is this right, Australia was rated eighth in the world and Uruguay was rated 31st? Mm. On the ELO rankings or whatever? No, is that no, right? No, I think or we, were, we were 40, we were 48 oh, were we? and they were 23rd or something. E ELO, <laughs> ELO, <laughs> ELO oh, broke no. up a long time yeah. ago. No. They're not, they're not, they're, they're not, they're, oh. they're not. But your point being that we deserve better. Well, no, just that, that you know, you want a, you want a concession when you're talking about yourself. Yeah, it would be nice, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, unfortunately, I mean, we're still minnows in terms yeah. of world, yeah, that's world football right. or world soccer, it, that's the problem. It, feel, it feels to me, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Frank, that, that in terms of ability, we're there. We, we know that our players, you know, I, I don't agree that Uruguay are a better team, but it feels that they knew what was required to qualify for a World Cup, and we, we're not quite at that stage yet. No, well, you look at Uruguay, and they played, they played 20 games under, you know, the same intensity and same pressure that was played on Sunday. Uh, we play one, one game like that every four years, mm. which is, I suppose, it's a, a disadvantage, and it's something which, you know, we need to be exposed to a lot more, and that's, that's the major problem we have. We don't have enough uh, competitive playing, you know, under the stress that we were playing mm. on, on a Sunday. Was it stressful for you as different from, you know, you've been in a lot of soccer grounds in the world? What, what do you mean by that? Well, I think when you go out, you, you know, you had, there were 65,000 people in the stadium, but you're talking a different mentality. Uh, for them, you know, the old saying, it's not a matter of life and death, it's more important than that. And, no. and it, it was like that. And no. to be honest, you know, for even, even for me sitting on the bench there, you know, the, the, the noise when it, when it happens when they score a goal or come onto the field, uh, it's like, you know, being hit by a bus. Not that I've been hit by a bus, but, you know, <laughs> you know what you mean. Whack it, the, the, the yeah. pressure, or, you know, just the, the waves, if you like. And were you fearful for the effect it would have on your players and their, their thinking? Well, I think Brett Emerton, who's 23, came out in an article and said, <clears throat> you know, he's played pretty much all over the world. He said he's, he's never experienced, uh, you know, a match like it or, or conditions that we were, we were under there. So, I mean, it may have had an effect. I haven't really spoken to the players in, in, in depth because we, we pretty much left straight after the game. Is it what you expected, though? Did you expect that to happen? I mean, you handled yourself so well at the airport. I don't know how you didn't react to that. Did you say that? Oh, you guys would have been... Oh, you would have been away. You would have been off. Oh, this is... We've got this. You were so dignified. Yeah, Particularly yeah. for sporting mm. people. This is after you got spat at and <laughs> et cetera. <laughs> but you reported them. You can't have that happening. It's, 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 uh, it's not civilised. It's not civilised. You were so civilised when you said it's not civilised. They didn't show the earlier part of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting actually that you chose that stuff because that, did it kind of backfire the fact that the Uruguayan press, like I think there was someone in the press today in the Uruguay that said Australian journalists can eat shit now, now that they've won because they said how dare you guys report the fact that we're animals and all this kind of stuff when it's just part of the game. So do you think that perhaps our press here took all that out of, out of, out of they you know, they, they beat it up, up a bit. Look, it was a small minority who were at the airport. Mm. I, I personally think it was a setup. Uh, mm -hmm. No one would know what time we were due to arrive at the airport mm. or whatever. Um, but, you know, it was a small minority. But at the end of the day, you know, it, it's the wrong thing. If, if that happened in Australia, you'd be locked up. Oh, you know, yeah. You'd be locked yeah. up and oh, arrested. Someone, someone gobbed on you. Oh, yeah. not no, only on me, just, on a few of the players. That's yeah. just... You know, Harry Kuehl, though. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a few stories about Harry, a few stories about Ned Zelich come out. Obviously, they, they, well, obviously, there's a million stories. They're, they're, once every four years, for two weeks, everyone's an expert. Are there any particular myths that you'd like to dispel or anything like that? Well, I think that the big one that's going around about Harry at the moment is that, you know, he, he put an ultimatum to, to, to me and the team that he had to play in a certain position and he wanted the captaincy and, I mean, that's the biggest load of garbage I've ever heard, you know. Harry's a, he's a pleasure to work with and he basically said, look, you know, you're the boss wherever you choose to play me. I'm happy to play as long as I'm playing the team. And, you know, it's funny when, in hindsight, everyone's an expert, as you say, and Wants, wants to have a go when, when you lose, but uh, mm. no, you know, the players themselves, I yeah. think, are, are credit to the game. But you, you know, you say everyone's an expert. After the game, I've read so much stuff, you should have brought him on, you should have moved him to here. Do you read that, or do you just, that's just a wall and you don't? Oh, you it? see it, but, uh, you know, I, I sort of, I let it slide because at the end of the day, 
you know, I've got to make decisions at the time and it's in the heat of a game which is really intense and, and sometimes you get it right and sometimes you get it wrong, but in my book I always get it right. Um, yeah. and that's, <laughs> but that's the crazy thing, see, you know, we were 2-0 up, oh, sorry, we were 2-0 down and they scored a goal. Had we scored a goal, then we'd be having a completely different discussion. It's, it, it, you know, we'd be talking about how much of a genius you are and mm. how much of a genius Soccer Australia and all the players are. That's, they're, that's they're, sport. That's yeah. sport, yeah, that's especially right. soccer, yeah. yeah. But what's well, well, interesting is that you then, you, you, it, it goes from like the greatest mm -hmm. triumph to the, to the worst sort of sporting tragedy for you. You then got to get on a plane and fly 24 hours. I mean, it's a hard... That's, that's, if you could just go home to your house and hide for a day or so, it'd be better. <laughs> How did you feel on the flight back? Uh, it's a bit of pill to swallow, I think, for, for everyone. Uh, and it happened so quick. You know, we got straight out of the dressing room, on a bus, straight to the mm. airport, and on a plane. Uh, and it's, it's very tough, you know. You've got a lot of different emotions going on, but I think it was after about the fourth champagne that, it, you know... <laughs> 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 Did you hear when you are actually watching, like, when that third goal came, did you break down or do you have to keep yourself in check? Well, the third goal, I think, arrived about the 90th minute, mm, so, that was, you know, yeah. as soon as it, <coughs> that, 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 I think you had it before, yeah, the footage of, yeah. where I've looked down, I've actually mm. turned back up to, to Graham Arnold and I said, it's over, it's finished, because once the third one went in, you up knew. until that yeah. stage, if yeah, we scored, it, yeah. we were there, we, yeah. we were really yeah. actually going to the World Cup, but once the third one went in, I think, as I said, it was in the 90th minute, there was uh, no coming back from there. So Can I just be here hypothetical for a second? S say, say we won, we go to the World Cup. What if we got knocked out ahead of Australians? It feels like, you know, in a year's time, we've still got that three-year gap before another qualifying period. Well, I think in, in all that... Say, say we won, we go to the World Cup. What if we got knocked out in the first or second round? How would that have changed Australian soccer? It feels like, you know, in a year's time, we've still got that three-year gap before another qualifying period. Well, I think in, in all aspects, uh, you know, in terms of sponsorship, right. um, you know, free-to-air television, you're talking about arguably the biggest sporting event in the world, uh, even ahead of the Olympics. Uh, you know, I've been saying that we've never been there for 28 years. So mm -hmm. I think if we get there and get there on a c consistent uh, basis, you'll, you'll see the game change in a big way. But unfortunately, we're not going to have that. Well, given that we haven't got there, what can we do now <laughs> for the next time round? Is it well, money? Uh, yeah, I think the game's going to be... We're still going to go ahead. You know, you get knocked down, you've got to get up and, and move forward. But I think it just showed the last three weeks the the game in this country is alive and well with mm. the amount of people that, for example, watched you know, the mm. game here in Australia and the game in Uruguay. Mm. It's a matter of capturing that public. But, um, you know, I don't have the answers. Otherwise, I most probably would be in charge of Southern yeah, Australia. Yeah, yeah, but 2006, you're going you're to give it a, a red hot go? Uh, yeah, look, I haven't, you know, I haven't been made an offer just yet, uh, and uh, you know they've said they want to keep me for four years, so hopefully I will be here in 2000. C can you work? Can you work like in Europe for a couple? Of, I know that they want you in Europe. Can you work in Europe for a couple of years and then dedicate yourself to the World Cup, or is it one or the other? No, it's one or the other. Okay. I think. And, and if I had the choice, you know, I'd stay here. Mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Block will be watching with great interest and hanging in for another four years for the. The next World Cup attempt. Not, can you make the next one not at bloody 6 a.m.? <laughs> 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 Would you please thank Mr. Frank Farina? <laughs> <laughs> Back with more panel right after.